Whenever you think of the most powerful weapons in the 40k universe, it's easy to picture the Emperor's sword or the talons of Horus, but there is one inconspicuous weapon used against the forces of chaos since the war in heaven, the nullifying superstructures known as the Cadian pylons. And with that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 facts about the 40k universe. I am your host Gersh1, and today we're talking about the Cadian pylons. If you guys are new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. What we try to do is take the lore of 40k and combine it with the tabletop. In today's video, at the end of this video, I'm actually going to be trying to create a Cadian Pylon Necron terrain piece. Um, so, we'll see how that goes. Uh, if you guys have suggestions for any other topics of 40k that you guys would like us to cover, just let me know what it is in the comment section below. And if you enjoy our content, um, consider hitting the like button and sharing this on YouTube so you can get more content like this. I really hope that you guys are appreciating these like hobby slash lore videos. They're a lot of fun to make. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Cadian Pylons. In a galaxy filled with mystery, the Cadian Pylons were amongst the most enduring. There were over 5,000 such structures scattered across the surface of the imperial world of Cadia. Each one stood some 500 meters above the surface and reached 250 meters below. Reports differed, but it was understood that there could have been anywhere between two to 3,000 more concealed below ground, as a result of the tectonic movements down the ages. For a very long time, the true purpose of these massive constructs was completely unknown to most within the Imperium. The tech priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus hypothesized that the pylons on Cadia exerted some effect over the Immaterium, rendering it calm and creating an unusual zone of space-temporal stability known as the Cadian Gate. This enabled ships to travel through the only known navigable route in and out of the Eye of Terror and into real space. There were many attempts to crack the code of the Cadian pylons. Servitors were sent in, but they would cease to function once inside or suffer circuit overloads. All attempts to breach the structure's surface was met with failure. Any recovered data was fragmentary at best and contradictory at worst. Even the identity of the pylons' creators was shrouded in mystery. Most within the Imperium knew that these Cadian pylons stood for millions of standard years before the coming of humanity to this remote area of space. There were some amongst the cult mechanicus that believed that the spires were the work of the undying Necron race, or their mortal predecessors the Necron Deer. But then there were also those on Mars that were convinced that the pylons were constructed by the Old Ones for the sole purpose of destroying the Necrons and their former Catan overlords. What made these mysterious constructs so strange was that no two of the pylons were identical in design, largely because the strange tubes that ran through them each followed unique patterns that differed from pylon to pylon. And although Cadia seemed to have the most amount of pylons, similar structures on other worlds in the Cadian sector near the Eye of Terror looked identical and worked almost the same as the Cadian pylons. It wouldn't be until late in the 41st millennium that the Imperium would realize that the Cadian pylons were made out of a substance known as Blackstone. Now Blackstone was just as mysterious as the pylons themselves. It was a stone that had a black hue and it possessed the ability under certain circumstances to outright nullify the psychic energies of the Immaterium or to absorb them and then unleash them with spectacular force. It was later learned from the Eldar that Blackstone was used by the Necrons during the War in Heaven to construct special pylon-like devices on various worlds across the galaxy that were capable of creating tetrahedral regions of space-time immune to the incursions of the Immaterium. And it was this knowledge that made the Imperium understand that the Cadian pylons had to be protected at all cost, otherwise the Cadian gate would fall. Unfortunately for the Imperium, Abaddon the Despoiler also discovered this strange truth about the pylons. For thousands of Terran years, the Despoiler sent his agents across the galaxy to locate these monoliths of black stone. He spent many years calling in old alliances, striking demonic bargains, and evoking ancient pacts with the traitor legions and their corrupted demon Primarchs. The Despoiler put together a plan to isolate and destroy these structures, using false objectives or even entire Black Crusades to conceal his true motive. Over the course of several world-scouring invasions, Abaddon shattered, toppled, or blasted apart these structures wherever he found them. Sometimes in person, other times it was his agents, his flagship the Planet Killer, or the immense Blackstone fortresses he stole during the Gothic War. The last of the greatest of these destructive campaigns was leveled at Cadia itself. Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade brought about so much death and destruction that his demonic allies could breach real space whenever they wished and be sustained indefinitely by the unbridled mayhem that raged around them. This was Abaddon's final move of his crimson path, for without the Cadian pylons, even Terra itself ran the risk of being swept up in a rapidly expanding Eye of Terror. 
But before this could happen, Archmago's Dominus Belisarius call with the aid of the Necron overlord Trazen the Infinite successfully activated the Cadian Pylon's network's full anti-psychic capabilities and actually began to close the Eye of Terror. Abaddon the Despoiler used the damaged bulk of his Blackstone Fortress, Will of Eternity, as an artificial asteroid, unleashing a kinetic strike on Cadia. The force of the massive Xenostar Fortress's impact with the planet destroyed the fields of pylons across the world. The sudden failure of these pylon networks allowed the Eye of Terror to begin to expand across the galaxy, swallowing up the mortally wounded world of Cadia, even as the tectonic stress ripped it apart. Suddenly, all the manifold armies of Chaos were free to pour into real space like blood from a deep wound. True to his claim, Abaddon had succeeded in ripping open the gates of hell. Humanity's only hope is the raising of new pylons, a task that the Adeptus Mechanicus is frantically trying to understand. The Necrons, led by the Silent King himself, are already doing this at the Pariah Nexus. To learn more about the Pariah Nexus and Black Stone, I'll put a link up above to a couple of different videos that we've created in the past, just so you understand what the Necrons are actually trying to do to destroy Chaos. Now that we know the lore behind the Necron pylons and the importance of Necron pylons, Let's build some. We're going to create some Necron terrain. This Cadian Pylon terrain piece is one of the easiest builds I've ever done. The first thing you do is cut a 1 inch by 6 inch rectangle out of pink insulation foam. You make sure that the bottom and the top of the pylon is flat by running it through your wire foam cutter. If you don't have a wire foam cutter, you could do all of this with just a regular X-Acto knife. Once you have the tall rectangle, you want to make some perforations using the wire foam cutter like I'm doing here. This is going to give the pylon a segmented design that once you paint it, it's going to look awesome. Uh, if you're using an X-Acto knife, just make sure not to cut all the way through. And basically, you're just cutting little pyramids or little triangles into um, that little piece. Make sure to measure everything out so that uh, it looks symmetrical all the way around. Uh, and now it's time to draw on the Necron Glyph. And because, like I said, this terrain piece is very symmetrical, I made sure to use a ruler and measure everything out and made sure that everything was centered and correct according to the overall design of the pylon. Necrons usually never mess up, uh, so I can't mess up either. Once the Necron Glyph is complete, it's time to scratch on the cracking on the actual pylon. To do this, I used a toothpick, and then I sketched out the cracking and the breaking on the actual black stone. You could also use a needle, like a sewing needle. Uh, that might actually work a little bit better because it's um, the, the wood is, is kind of flimsy, whereas if you have a metal pin, uh, it'll be easier. Now this pylon needs a base. To do this, I cut a small square out of the same pink foam that I was using, and then I tapered the edges with the X-Acto knife. Once that's done, it's time to glue the pylon to the base and add sand for texture. Once the glue is dry, it's time to add Mod Podge and black paint as the undercoat. This is going to solidify everything and uh, make sure that everything uh, stays together and nothing deteriorates with the paint that I'm going to be adding. Once this dries, you might want to add another layer of black just to make the black stone really dark. Uh, this terrain piece is supposed to be really dark because the next step is to paint on green edge highlights. It's going to go all around the structure and inside of the cracking and the breaking. This makes it seem like the energy inside the pylon is just waiting to explode. And then lastly, you want to dry brush a quick little gray or, or tan on the actual base so that um, you give the, the base texture and it, and it contrasts the actual black stone. And there you have it, a Necron Pylon. And as you can see with the miniatures on the bottom, this pylon really stands out, so it would work well as an objective marker. You could actually build six of these, and then you have the objective markers that is that are required for most games. You could even uh, change up the glyphs so that it denotes different numerical values, uh, because I, like I said, some, some of them, the, the numerical value does matter. Um, other than that, the actual uh, terrain piece is not going to provide like line of sight uh, cover or, or anything like that. It, it just looks cool. So if you have multiple of these um, on the battlefield, all it's going to do is it's going to make it look like Necron terrain.
Now with the um, with my new wire foam cutter, I think I'm going to be doing more terrain pieces. So expect that in the near future, I want to build like an entire tomb world. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that. If you guys have any suggestions for other topics of 40k that you guys would like us to cover, just let me know what it is in the comment section below. Whether you want me to build terrain or um, just talk about a certain uh, piece of lore, let me know. And uh, I really appreciate you guys listening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.